Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. We are in downtown Austin with an incredible view behind us. We're back at the Foursquare Builder site where Kevin Emman is the project manager and he's doing a great job with the two most important things that I think any builder can master. Number one is communication and number two is organization. Let's go take a look at what he's doing. Hey Kevin. How are you doing? I'm real well. How so are you, you're, Jordan? So you are a project manager for Foursquare Builders. Right. But unlike some other builders where they have the project managers in an office and they go remote to the build sites, you actually bring your office here. Tell me a little bit about how you do it and why you do it. Well, we uh, install Connex here so that we have more organization. Uh, we have the ability to have a dust-free environment for our computers, our printers. Uh, it's kind of a uh, command center. Uh, everybody knows where I'll be most of the time. Um, we have all of our information here, and uh, it just helps. Uh, it's a large enough home to where it can afford a, a command center. So you are here then full time at this yes. site. You're not mu managing multiple sites. You move here from beginning to completion of this site. Yes. Another thing that I like that you've done on it, you're making it do double duty. So not only is it your office, but you're also doing these amazing mock-ups on the side of your office so that everybody can see what the architectural intent is. Tell me a little bit about why you do it and then how you go about well choosing what to put where. I chose this location because we have a small lot and there really is no other place to do it. And so I was looking for a way to minimize and right away it jumped at me that I could use the Connex yeah. as the mock-up yeah. wall. So uh, that's what we've done. Yeah, you don't have much space. And then I like this too. Not only are you building your mock-ups, but once you have them built, you actually protect them with your T-ply right. to make sure that they stay looking nice. Give me a little bit of why you do it. Well, the reason I did that was I don't want the sun to fade this before mm -hmm. I have the chance to put three different colors on here. Oh. So uh, it's, it's to protect it, yes, but uh, also against the sun rays so that uh, that so fading that they doesn't can happen. See yeah. what they, and then just in general, these mock-ups here, you, you do everything from a simple, now this is a, we talked about it on the last video, but this is a 1920s house right. originally, right. and this was the original siding, right? Tell me what you got going on here in this So floor. yes, this is the original shiplap siding, yep. and uh, we found a boral product that matched it exactly. Uh, this is a much more superior product than wood. It uh, moves less, it's insect resistant, and it holds paint for a longer period yeah. of time. Um, so a great choice there. So this is like a one-to-one -one match, but right. down here, you're not exactly matching this profile, but you went with the Boral product. Right, again. we're going away from historical here a little bit, but uh, this is again the Boral product and has the same features, uh, will hold paint better, will need less caulk over the years. And then you trace the profile of the original and then you've got the replacement here so everybody can see the architect, the client, yep. and the craftsmen who are going to be putting this together see exactly. exactly what it was, what the intent was, and then where we're going from here. And then you take this from a small scale and you blow it up right. on, on the bigger scale here. Right. So this is definitely the more modern look yeah, that's going to be happening on the back side of the house? Well, this is the interior. Okay. We're, we're doing a nickel gap uh, ceiling in uh, the hallway. So uh, it, it shows that uh, western red cedar, and then it shows the uh, boral material on the front entry. Uh, it also shows that we're using a divider board so that you're not bringing miters together. You get yeah. a much better look when you have a divider board like that. Yeah, especially when you're mixing profiles. I, this is great, talking about, again, communication. Right. Everybody can see this and agree, this is what we're going to do so that after your siding guys get started for the first day and they've got the first quarter of the house sided, the client's not coming up and say, I didn't know it was going to look like that. Exactly. Or you don't have this detail here and you and the client have talked about it, but the craftsman just went ahead and did it with a mitered and they said, well, I didn't know it was supposed to look like that. Just having a mock-up takes away so much of the uncertainties and so much of the unknowns. It also allows the architect to tell me that he didn't want to see this three quarters of an inch proud Exactly. And instead, I cut a rabbit so that I get coverage on my boards, allowing yep. for movement and a little bit less uh, projection. Yep. Great details, great communication. You continue that inside with a whole nother level of communication organization. Let's go check that out next. Sounds good. 
So now we are in the belly of the command center. This is where you keep everything organized. This is where you do all your communications through. And at the very beginning of the job, you get a drawing set and then it's your responsibility to digest that and communicate it out to all concerned parties. Ha tell me how you do that from the beginning. Yeah, uh, initially I tried to digest the architectural plans mm -hmm. and, and formulate a 3D picture in my head of what's going to be built. And speaking of 3D pictures, I also noticed that you don't only put it in your head, you also print out the renderings so that clients and subs and even yourself can see what this is going to look like. Because it is right. difficult to go from a 2D to 3D. You're really good at it because you've done this all your life. But for a lot of guys, seeing a bunch of lines on a, on a drawing doesn't convey into the 3D. So I love how you make the right. 3D images available for everybody who comes in here. And even during conversations with clients and, and subs, uh, the, we, we point to these and we can often yeah. get through, um, uh, get a better understanding. Exactly. And then as far as, so that's the 3D side of it, but then you said that you also had two separate prints. You had your engineering prints and right. you have your architectural prints and then you're trying to marry those up. What right. do you do there? Right, so yeah, you try to marry the two together and look for inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, often you'll see that uh, the structural didn't uh, compensate for an architectural look mm -hmm. and you have to adjust. Uh, by adjusting, you reach out to the architect or engineer and ask questions or RFIs. Yeah. And that goes back into what you're doing out here with the mock-ups and then you said that you do full-size templates too because right. laying all of this stuff out to make sure that it not only functions the way that it's supposed to but also looks the way that it's supposed to is so critical. I have also noticed on your prints you have everything color-coded. Tell me a little bit about your strategy in that. Yeah, I like color because I think you see deeper into a, a, a picture or a drawing. Um, it, uh, it just allows you to have multiple layers and mm -hmm. sometimes lines can be confusing. So if you're using colors, I think it brings more uh, information to yep. each person looking at it. Yep. And then you're using, uh, you're using different software applications to both bring out the detail there, color them. I mean, this, this one here, you've got what the architect drew, but then you've got all of your own notes and colors and you really simplify that detail to where anybody can look at the drawing and understand what's going on. And that's what you send to your subs. You're not making the sub take it upon themselves to get their own version of what it might be. Yeah, often when I'm trying to give information or ask questions, I use pictures, uh, the saying, uh, pictures worth a yeah. thousand words. So I'll take a snapshot, put it into preview, and then I'm able to color code arrows and questions and so forth. And again, uh, immediately people are able to understand what I'm trying to ask or, or state. And then what happens when there is a question that a sub brings up or that you see that you don't have the answer to? How do you communicate that back up the food chain to get the answers that you need? Because one of the problems that uh, a lot of builders will run into is they make assumptions, right? I've been guilty of this. It's like, well, it doesn't completely make sense, but I think what they're wanting to do is this. And then you find out two, three weeks later, like, oh, that's not what they were trying to say. Developing that relationship and uh, asking those questions um, is essential. I don't, I, I try to inform them about everything that's going on. Yeah. Uh, uh, another good saying, fall out of love of, uh, with the project you're doing. It's not, it's not about you. Yeah. Uh, so I ask questions constantly. Um, when I have, uh, I don't assume. I try to, I try to get what they want. Yeah. And so I bring them in on all the conversations. Yeah, yeah, and that takes a lot of discipline. And then you've got a lot of software programs that help you do that. Right. Communicating RFIs back and forth. You have another one that you're talking about where all of the, all of the concerned parties can add material list and to. Right be able to keep everything organized in a single application that helps everybody stay on the same yeah, page. Yeah, basically a clearinghouse. Yeah. Everybody can come in and see the information. Also, the clients are in there as mm -hmm. well, seeing all the decisions that are being made. They'll approve or uh, disapprove things. Um, so it, it, it just, it's like a central area with, with all the information loaded and yeah. keeps everybody and, in check. And then you're not only relying on software, you also have this incredible visual organization system that I absolutely love. You have everything from appliance specifications to stucco purchase orders to um, you know wood and drywall. Everything is completely visual organized and it makes a great way of knowing what's coming up next. Tell me a little bit about what got you to this level and then what it helps you avoid. Well, 
quite often a project manager's on the go mm -hmm. and has to have information quickly. I can find things quicker here instead of burying it in a file cabinet. Yep. Uh, it reminds me of things I need to be doing or looking at. Um, so it, it, it just stares you in the face yeah. and, and makes you realize that you should be working on this or that. Yeah, yeah, I love the visual reminders. Kevin, you are doing a great job here. This is one of the best command centers I've seen. I love that you bring it on site and that you're here to answer questions just in the few minutes that we've been on site. There's been three or four different guys come up and say, hey, I've got a question about this, I've got a question about that, and having that quick turnaround keeps the velocity of the job right. going. Being off site and saying, I'll be there in 30 minutes, it just kills that forward momentum. So I think you're doing it right. You've got a ton of great ideas on organization and communication, which again, I think is two of the most critical parts of your job. So great job, keep up the good work. It's been great seeing your project. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks so much for having us over here. I really like all of your tips and tricks on both organization and communication, two of the most important parts of building, in my opinion. Thanks to you for watching. Subscribe below if we've earned it. Comment below with any tips and tricks of your own, and we'll see you next time on The Build Show.